As we reported last night, a federal judge granted preliminary approval of a settlement between the National Football League and 4,500 former players. The lawsuit is over the league's financial responsibility to help cover the cost of treating players who suffered concussions on the football field. This decision comes two weeks after the NFL agreed to remove its $675 million ceiling on payments. Meanwhile, the NCAA, which governs college sports, issued a series of guidelines on Monday related to concussion safety. Head injuries in football, of course, has become an issue at every level of the sport. Well, Fred Smoot is a former Washington Redskin cornerback and players advocate, and he joins us by phone from Jackson, Mississippi. Fred, welcome to Arise America. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, no problem. Thank you all for having me. If I understand it correctly, you were a part of these uh, 45, 4,800 or so uh, former players that were a part of this uh, class action lawsuit. So what's your reaction to this, this decision preliminarily to move forward, which could lead to settlements for all players? Well, uh, that's the mission. You know, when everything was brought together, I think the one thing we had in mind was making sure every player was taken care of, but not overly paid for anything, uh, anybody getting an extra check. It's more of more the thing that, you know, we're the, we the guys that's going to feel the repercussions of this. And, and everybody says, well, you played football, you played football, you know what you was getting into before you did it. Well, also, you know, I, I just equated and I, I compared to uh, the Surgeon General. What he says on a pack of cigarettes, he lets you know beforehand that cases of cancer comes from smoking cigarettes. Well, we didn't have that. We didn't have a Surgeon General warning about concussions. And when you say injury, concussion was not looked at as an injury. And that's what I try to, you know, tell people. It was one of those things where we played through that. It was called just getting a ding. You, you, you shook your head. You'll be all right. We do that. That's, that's normal. It was part of the game. Yes, it was. So that's the thing that I think that comes from this. I, I don't want anybody to take it for granted like the players are in it for the money. I just personally want everybody to be taken care of, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, brain damage and things of that type. As I understand it, uh, a part of this preliminary settlement says that all former NFL players, uh, retired players, would uh, could be eligible for the benefits if they're able to to prove it. It would also cover legal costs, uh, so the attorneys get a little bit from this. Uh, and also that in this settlement, the NFL does not admit any guilt. How do you feel about that? Uh you know, that's one of them things I think when you look at it from a business standpoint, I think they have to move on that way, and we have to move on that way because the guys are part of this lawsuit are also guys that still part of the NFL family. It's one of the largest, longest-running fraternities that you can, you know, you want to be a part of. So I just think it's a thing where they had to stay it that way. But, you know, we know what's coming from this, and we know why I was here. And it, it just was a thing, and when I look back at it, it just, you know, identifying the, prog uh, the problem and taking care of it. And it didn't happen at a timely fashion. So hopefully the future players benefit from this, this, this one stance. Indeed. Fred, I'm going to ask you to stand by. I want to add to this conversation Brian Gilmore, who is a veteran professional football player, and he joins us from Fort Worth, Fort Worth Texas. Brian, it's good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Um, you had the opportunity to be a part of this class action suit and uh, decided not to be. Tell me why not. And then after you do that, tell me what you think about this preliminary decision. Well, to be quite honest with you, my decision came from a uh, bout with the NFL, from the NFL disabilities claim. Uh, it basically was, you know, if you got a good lawyer and you were able to go to your own doctors and get qualified through them, then you just submit your paperwork to the NFL and you kind of go through the whole little process. And I just got tired of lawyers scamming players. Uh, that's pretty much what we went through as players. Lawyers making a lot of money off of us and we're really not benefiting from the programs that the NFL had in place for us. I don't know how much detail you know about this preliminary settlement, but uh, there are a couple of uh, former players, Alan Feneca, if I'm saying that correctly, and Sean Morey. They've already filed an objection to this revised settlement. Uh, I won't read all of it, but they say among everything, among some things, that it excludes some classes of players, uh, that the negotiations were not done at arm's length, and that the notification documents are false and misleading. Are you worried that even though this settlement settlement has been approved to move forward, that it will be so cumbersome that those that really need the benefit of it might not actually get it? You know, that, that's the whole point, and that's my whole stance. I mean, this is really a joke. 
All this is is just uh, goodwill coverage for the, you know, through the media for the NFL. You know, with the season coming up, they're just trying to generate some, you know, good public interest in the uh, product. But to be quite honest with you, it is a very labor intensive, it is a humiliating process, and it's very demeaning as a uh, former athlete to have to go through some of these tests that the NFL puts you through and then at the end of the day tell you, hey, you didn't qualify, by the way. We know, we do recognize that you had significant injuries, but we're not going to pay you or compensate you for the injuries that you sustained while playing for our league. Fred, let me bring you back in this, and I really just have a few seconds left, but what do you think the NFL should do going forward to prevent this type of situation ever again? Well, you know, what I tell people, we're in a more uh, what I would call law conscious era where everybody, uh, everybody wants to look for any type of lawsuits and stuff like that. I think this opened the eyes of the NFL and understand if they know any, any information that the players might need to know going into the future that they might, they might need to get it out now. If they, if they want to proceed in a good manner because a lot of these kids, are st they begin to stop playing football. Their parents are not letting them play football because of stuff like this. And they understand the future of the NFL are the young kids. So they understand the ramifications of this. I think their understanding is now if they can only come to the right agreement to make sure that everybody before this era was taken care of, I think we can move forward in a good manner. And it just comes down to business. It comes down to numbers. And I think that's what it comes down to. So if we can find the right number, I think everything can proceed in, in, in a great way. Fred Smoot, Brian Gilmer, thank you both, gentlemen. Thanks for having us.